The 2020 atrial fibrillation guidelines introduce a whole set of new ideas and new evidences how to deal with patients and for patients with atrial fibrillation. Let me start off with the one of the principal changes uh, of the 2020 atrial fibrillation guidelines with respect to the perspective on atrial fibrillation. In the past, we, we graded patients with atrial fibrillation mostly based on ECG phenotyping paroxysmal persistent, long-standing persistent atrial fibrillation. We believe that this is no longer adequate, but we have to take a wider scope and a wider view on patients with atrial fibrillation. So we've introduced the 4S scheme for characterization of atrial fibrillation that provide more insight into the clinical status of the patient. It provides insight into the substrate of the, the patient with atrial fibrillation, and it, it has an impact on the, the, on the development of, of therapy streams uh, for the patient. So that is one of the key innovations. The second innovation that makes management of patient with atrial fibrillation more intuitive and easier is the ABC pathway. The A stands for avoid stroke and consider anticoagulation to prevent the devastating complication of stroke. The B sense stands for better symptom care, look for quality of life, improve the, the patient's quality of life. It's so important for patients with atrial fibrillation, not only to prevent complications, but to improve quality of life. And the C stands for comorbidities. Atrial fibrillation stands not alone in the health status of the patient. And it's usually in line with quite a, quite a number of comorbidities, diabetes, uh, hypertension, uh, uh, chronic kidney disease, coronary artery disease, obesity. So consider these, these comorbidities more serious in the future than uh, they may have been considered in the past. Talk to the patient about the importance of lifestyle changes in order to reduce the risks that got along with comorbidities. One key element that makes that very, very clear what the patient himself or herself can do is uh, the obesity issue. If you lose weight, your quality of life will improve and the atrial fibrillation burden will by itself decrease only by weight loss. So there are huge opportunities in that field. Aside from that, we have uh, updated the recommendations for interventions in the field of catheter ablation rhythm control strategy. And I would like to focus on one key element that refers to catheter ablation of atrial fibrillation in patients with heart failure, as we believe that patients with heart failure and reduced ejection fraction have the highest likelihood of gaining profit for quality and quantity of life by catheter ablation. So overall, the uh, 2020 AF guidelines uh, on atrial fibrillation management put a clear focus on patient values and quality of care in and around treatment of atrial fibrillation.